My name is Dr. Jonathan Lewin. I'm the director of the Center for Spinal Disorders in Englewood, New Jersey. I'd like to take you on a whirlwind tour of understanding spinal disc herniation and spinal discectomy. The first technique I'd like to talk about is that of the classic microdiscectomy. In that situation, a spinal incision is made, and in our model, that would be between the third and the fourth vertebrae. An incision would be made, muscle would be stripped, and this painful disc herniation, which is outlined in red and is irritating the L3 nerve root, can be directly accessed and the disc can be removed. With the use of advanced fluoroscopic x-ray equipment, a smaller incision can be made, which will enable the patient to have much less muscle dissection throughout the surgery. This spinal tube can be placed directly onto the disc. Specialized instruments can be brought into the field, and the disc can be removed. That is known as a tubular endoscopic discectomy. For a true endoscopic discectomy, utilizing high-definition cameras such as these, a small incision can be made, a camera placed directly onto the disc, and again, using advanced small arthroscopic equipment, the disc can be accessed and removed through the camera. Occasionally, a disc is very small and contained. In that setting, a percutaneous discectomy may be applicable. In that setting, a small incision is made, a small trocar metal device is inserted, and either through a suction or some form of a laser apparatus, the disc can be removed directly. Just to review, the four techniques we mentioned were the open classic microdiscectomy incision, a tubular endoscopic discectomy where the procedure is performed through a small tube, a true endoscopic procedure using a high definition camera, and lastly, a percutaneous discectomy through a very small incision. Wishing you the best of spinal health. We look forward to treating you. We look forward to hearing from you. Mm -hmm.